I'm up here out in the mountains searching for one of the most elusive birds in my state, the mountain quail. Mountain quails are stunning birds that stay hidden in the thick of undergrowth of the forest with their echo calls being heard from miles and miles away. During this three-day adventure, I would have one of the closest encounters I've ever had with one before. Bird photography is an interesting art form. There's so many different types, from urban in a concrete jungle to completely out in nature in the backwoods, like today. These birds found here have hardly, if ever, seen a human. So today my goal is to use camouflage to try and get closer up with birds and get some stunning shots of them at sunrise. On my first morning out, I stopped by the meadow to try and film these red-winged blackbirds out in the bog. I didn't want to spend too much time with them as I was truly after the mountain quail on this adventure, but watching their breath roll off into the frosty air as their sounds resonate through the sky is always a good way to start off a morning. I didn't get any shots I really liked here, but tomorrow I'd wind up spending some time with them and getting some cool stuff. I hiked for a ways and found myself walking through more meadow, forest, and river listening to the sounds of nature and the birds singing amongst the canopy. In a place like this where there is no noise but that of creation, just listening can be an experience in and of itself. As I journeyed, the mountain quail's songs echoed all throughout the distance from miles away, but none were close enough to pursue. I stopped for a few minutes at a location that I thought was pretty. We had a squirrel letting off an alarm call in the distance, freaking out about something. We had a flyby with a few birds, including two types of towhee and a flycatcher, but ultimately nothing too great for photographing. It's been pretty dry looking around for some more animals right now that I can actually use this camouflage setup with. I've been looking at some spots for mountain quail, which is something I really wanna get once again and also some spots I've seen nests in previous years, hoping that I can find something again to utilize this camouflage in, but so far, nothing yet for that. Eventually though, a mountain quail started calling within a quarter mile of my location, and I started tracking him down. So we were chasing down this mountain quail sound that I was hearing from a while back, but it was close enough to go after. Uh, when I started getting close, I think I was crunching on some twigs just a little bit too loud on my approach and it stopped calling when we got pretty close by. And it's back in some thick, thick foliage. So I don't think there's a good chance of us getting this guy. I'm trying to watch the stumps around here and the uh, logs that they like to go on top of and see if one comes out. But uh, chances are, uh, might have missed out on our opportunity here. Wait for it. Oh. Okay, that's them again. They pick back up. See them in these logs right back here, but nowhere to be found. All right. Oh, well, this guy's tricking us. <laughs> the mountain quail had evaded us on day one. So day two, I decided to try to look in the same area for the mountain quail that was calling before. I got the location narrowed down a little further, but by the time I could get closed in, it was quiet and gone. Instead, I spent my morning capturing a McGalvery's Warbler, nice and closely, and a Cassin's Vireo, which was a first for me. This bird had a beautiful call that I got to record up close, although I never got any good shots of him. There's a time and place for everything in wildlife photography, including camouflage. 
In a lot of scenarios, it might not really matter that much, but with a mountain quail in a scenario like this, it can really pay off. What it does more than anything is not so much that the bird is not gonna know that you're there, but it kind of confuses the bird a little bit with your silhouette and how big you are by a lot of the leafy gear blending into the background from an awesome sponsor like Quick Camo for this video. What the gear does is kind of blends me in with my surroundings, makes me feel like I'm more part of the environment, and ooh, there's a Western Tanager. Whew, what a beautiful bird. One of my favorite parts about Quick Camo is the intentionality that they put into their designs. They use no UV brighteners to make sure you're as hidden as possible. And they also use real tree, mossy oak, really reputable camouflage brands. Even with their gloves, you can tell the intentionality of which they've designed it with. One of my favorite things about Quick Camo is their unique hat and mask patented design. You can simply tuck the mask back into the hat when you don't need to use it, or you can drop it back out in an instant when the moment calls for it. This kind of versatility makes it really easy to use no matter what type of situation you're in. Quick Camo was kind enough to offer a discount to you guys, so make sure to use my promo code NIGHT15 in the description below to be able to get 15% off any gear that you wanna purchase through the end of this week. I started making my way back, but realized that the red-winged blackbirds I've so often overlooked here had some pretty predictable flight patterns. Unfortunately, the snow melt was so insane this year that the bog is deeper than I've ever seen it, past my waist at some points. So I had to stay a little further away than I wanted, but I still got to watch some cool behavior and birds in flight and got a few shots that I decently liked. Even a spotted sandpiper stopped by on a log that it seems to live on. Man, it's amazing how different nature can be. We're literally like all these blackbirds, you know, will, will fly away and flush if you get too close to them. And then we're walking up, walking back uh, to the car right now, and this one just pops out right in front of us, lets us take some video of it, and it's just like 10 feet away, could care less. It's amazing the differences sometimes in specific personalities within the species. I was determined to get the mountain quail this morning. After two failed attempts, I knew exactly where it would be, when it would be, and this time, it wouldn't evade me. I made my way out past the meadow, into the forest, and up the hill to get into place before sunrise. And sure enough, I hear him again. As I approached the boulder that I knew it would be on top of, the calls kept getting louder. My heart was racing as the moment was approaching. I knew that this was the closest I've ever been to one of these guys, and for years I've wanted an opportunity like this. As quietly as I could, I started making my approach by scrambling over the top of the rock. Eventually, I got into a position that I knew it would come by, waited for just a few moments, and sure enough, it came over. It took a few seconds to analyze me, trying to figure out what I was due to the camouflage. Then, within less than 10 seconds, he was gone. The moment was a sort of bittersweet, I had captured this guy up closer than I ever had before, yet it was so brief I barely got to enjoy it. My heart was pounding as I waited around, but unfortunately he was dug into the brush once more and never returned. Each year for the past four years I've attempted this journey with yet to still get the exact moment I've desired. But I'd say that this year was so far the best with pulling out a single amazing photo from the adventure. Thank you all for following along. I hope you're inspired and remember that the best moments in life are worth the extra effort.
If you enjoyed the video, I'd be honored if you subscribed below. And if you want to watch last year's adventure searching for the mountain quail, check out this video here in the end screen.